So fortunately for us, the comment update is going to be incredibly simple. The only thing that we have to worry about is updating the existing comment. We don't have to worry about the one-to-many relationship like we do when we actually create. And the reason that we don't have to worry so much in the update is because the relationship's already been formed. And if you're gonna be making an update to a comment, like you're gonna edit a comment, you're going to know the ID already. So it's not as involved, but I'll still explain it anyway. Let's just say we, our comment has an ID of two. We're going to, of course, send up the JSON. So let's say we want to edit Palantir is very good. We will send up the new JSON along with the ID. And of course, we're going to still have to check to make sure that the comment exists. We'll pass it the ID, uh, we'll run save changes tracking will be locked in and the updates will occur uh, for the existing record. But let's go ahead, let's hop in VS Code and let's get coding on this. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to go within our comment controller and we are going to make a put. So first things first, we'll do put and here we're going to have a route and this route is going to take in a string with curly braces ID, we're still gonna need that ID. You, I guess you could put it within the DCO, but I think in cases of updates, you need to be very explicit because if you don't have that ID, I guess somebody, some people will think that you don't have to have an ID for the comment and you want to be very explicit with these updates that there needs to be an ID there. So first thing, I'm gonna go I action results. Then we're gonna go update, go from route. And within the route, we're going to have an int of ID. And then within the from body, very similar to the previous update that we had before, we're going to need to create an update for it. And I would highly suggest creating different updates for each one of these. So I'm gonna go update request DTO, and we're gonna call this the update DTO. Okay, and this hasn't actually been created, so we're gonna go to the comment. We're gonna call this update request, uh, update comment request DTO, update comment request DTO. And it's going to look exactly the same as the create comment. And it's good, even though that they are similar and we're kind of repeating ourselves. it's better to have these already hard-coded beforehand because I could almost bet you in any app that you work on, these DTOs are going to be changing frequently. You're gonna have to make adjustments to them all the time. So a lot of times it's not good to repeat yourself, but in the terms of making these DTOs, I think it's definitely worth it. Okay, so we're gonna go down here. Then uh, have some curly braces. Let me make sure that this is, okay, this is de definitely working. So now what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go comment, we'll go await comment repo, and we do, I'm almost like 100% sure, of course, we don't have the actual update. So we're gonna do the update as async. So go within your comment repository, and here's where we're going to create the update. We're gonna go ahead and just do the interface. So we'll go task and the update can be null. So we're gonna go update. We're gonna make this nullable. Go uh, update async. And this update async is gonna take in an ID and it's also going to take in a comment. So we're gonna go comment and we're gonna say, and it's going to take in the comment model. Make sure not to actually take in the comment DTO. So go here, uh, go to our repository. We're gonna get a red squiggly line. Control dot, go ahead, implement that interface. So let's go ahead down to the actual update or to update DTO and we're gonna go ahead and create this. So we'll go here and first things first, we're gonna have to get our existing comment. So we'll say var existing comment. We need to check to make sure that the comment is already existing. Otherwise we're gonna return null. Okay, so going to here now we're gonna go comments, uh, find a sync. Go ahead, pass in the ID. And we need to make this a sync. Also, if it is null, so check if existing comment is equal to null. So if it is null, we want to go ahead and return. And we don't want to go any further. So we're just gonna go ahead and return null right here. 
After this, we're going to get our existing comment. So this is where we want to write on the object that we get back from the database. .NET Core, or Entity Framework, I should say, is going to start tracking it. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go comment model. We're going to go title. Looking good. Existing comment. And we'll go to content. We need. We only want to alter the content and the title. We don't want to alter the date or anything. So we'll go here. And we'll go content. The content is looking good. So after this, this is when we can actually apply the changes because our object has been changed. So here, and we've got our context. Then we're going to do our save changes async. Go ahead and run that. We don't need to pass it anything. And after this, this is when we want to return the existing comment after we've went ahead and changed it. Okay, so that is looking good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our controller here. And we need to pass it the ID and we also need to pass it the comment model. So go into here. We're going to go ID. And here is where we're going to have to make a detail. We can't go ahead, since this is a comment model, we can't pass in the DTO. So we need to go ahead, we need to make a mapper for this DTO. So I'm going to go right in here and it's going to be very similar to the one that we just created up above. It's just going to be an update DTO. So we're going to go up here and we're going to call this to comment from update. And I think you can kind of infer uh, which one, which DTO it is from the actual name. I don't think we need to make it any more explicit than that. So we're going to go up to here. This is where we're going to say update comment request DTO. We're going to go ahead and pass in the comment DTO just like this. Also, shout out to Alec Sandor Melenkov. Uh, we don't need the stock ID. He pointed out this error right here. So let's go ahead. Let's get rid of the stock ID. And go ahead. Also, make sure to get rid of it from the perimeter. Make sure to get rid of it out of the actual body of the comment. Then we're going to go into here and we're going to pass in our update DTO. So we're going to go uh, update DTO. Then we're going to go to comment from update, just like this. And that's what we want. Also, one last other thing is I found an error. Uh, actually a couple of videos down the line, make sure to add the ID to the top right here and you guys will be good to go. So next, what we want to do is we want to check. So if comment is equal to null, we'll go ahead and we'll say not found and we'll say comment not found. And that should be explicit enough for anybody that's getting the data back to know what happened. Then we'll say return OK is equal to the comment model. So we'll say comment is equal to, to comment DTO. And I guess we don't really even have to put that there, but I think it's pro it'll probably make it look a little bit nicer. OK, so looking good. Also forgot to add the return here. So let's go ahead and restart this .NET watch run. And we've got our swagger open. Let's get a comment that we could change. So let's go for, and instead of title comment, title content, let's change it to something more realistic. So we'll go here. I'm going to change this to four. The title is Apple. We'll say Apple is the best stock, which it kind of really is. Apple is the best stock. There we go. So let's go ahead and execute. Looking good. Let's check to make sure that it actually changed up here. And Apple, title Apple, Apple is the best stock. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. On to delete. Make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.